focus in this episode from false teaching that we looked at in previous episode to characteristics of false teachers. I want to do this by looking at some passages uh, from Jeremiah 23. Now, Jeremiah 23 is a amazing chapter in which God is speaking to Jeremiah about the condition of the people. Their hearts have gone from God. They've backslidden. They've been drawn away from the Lord. And in that condition, they had turned to listening to false teachers, false prophets, giving words that they wanted to hear. But God is telling Jeremiah that these are words that God has not authorized. God has not said. So let's go through. I'm not going to read the entire chapter because it's lengthy, but I want to hit some of the high points. And I uh, really do encourage you to go back into your Bible in your quiet time and read the entire chapter of Jeremiah 23 it is a profound chapter, very rich, very deep, um, good, good for contemplation and, and prayer. There's a lot in there that as you read that chapter, you will see, uh, man, we are in a very, very, very similar situation uh, in Christianity today. So I want to start off by reading Jeremiah 23, verse one. It reads this way. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture says the Lord. So all, all right off the top, he sets a tone when he uses the word woe. That's a, a word of cursing. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. So these men, and unfortunately, sometimes even women are not in a good position in relation to God. If their intent is to hurt the sheep or scatter them by lying to them. Moving on in verse 16 and 17, God says this, thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesied to you. You make them worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. They continually say to those who despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. And to everyone who walks according to the dictates of his own heart, they shall say, no evil has come upon you. So these are people who don't tell you the truth about your condition before God. They say you'll have peace and everything will be OK. Uh, and that is not true. If you hate God, they speak according to the deceit the text says, of their own heart and the dictates of their own heart. They have their own agenda. So they tell people who are under the right, uh, just condemnation of God, no evil will come to you. There is no hell. God doesn't punish sin. He loves everybody. He treats everybody fairly. He understands you and therefore he knows why you did what you did and he'll be lenient with you on that day. They give a false assurance of safety uh, to people who really should not be assured of safety at all. In fact, they should be fearful that they'll fall under the hand of God in his righteous judgment. So these are some characteristics of the teachers themselves. They speak out of the dictates of their own heart. They speak out of a vision in their own heart, not mandated by text, mandated by motive, unpure motive, and by unpure, uncircumcised vision of their own heart by desires that are not based in God's word and not meant for the betterment of his flock. And we must watch for them, friends. In verse 21, God says, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. These are men and women claiming to have been sent by God, claiming to speak for God. They stand in front of some of God's people and make these claims. And yet God says, I have not sent them. They are not authorized messengers of mine. I have not spoken to them, yet they are speaking on behalf of me, but they have not heard my voice, verse 21 is saying. Verse 26, indeed, they are prophets of the deceit of their own hearts. They prophesy lies because in their heart they are deceived. And out of that deceit, they speak, quote unquote, for God. It is a losing proposition all the way. Listen to verse 28 and 29. The prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. For what is the chaff to the wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord? And like a hammer that breaks a rock into pieces? What is a dream to the word of God? What is a vision to the word of God? You have men and women standing in pulpits, preaching dreams and visions, extra biblical encounters and no Bible. You'll know a tree by its fruit. What is the chaff to the wheat? That is God's assessment 
of the soundness of that method, the soundness of those doctrines. What is a dream to the word of God? What is a vision to the word of God? What is an experience to the word of God? What is a motivational talk to the word of God? What is a self-help talk to the word of God? Chaff to wheat. Verse 32b says that these people, these prophets, these quote unquote teachers, they shall be of no profit to the people at all. So if your bookshelf is filled with these kinds of books, if your ears and minds are being filled with these kinds of teachings, if you put these individuals before your eyes, individuals who dispense chaff, they are not benefiting you. No matter how warm they make you feel, no matter how right it sounds, no matter how much sense in your mind you feel they make, they are bearing no eternal fruit in you. They are not speaking to your everlasting profit. They are making you more anemic. They are making you weaker. They are making you more adverse to sound doctrine and thus more adverse to God. And by using that Berean method we spoke about in the last episode, you will be able to have your discernment raised so you will be able to see it. That while they would tell you that they're doing you a great service, you will be able to see through the enlightening of God's word that they are actually trying to harm you, to hurt you. Why? Why is that the case? Because John 17, 17 says, sanctify them by the truth. This is Jesus praying for you. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is the truth. In other words, the only method God uses to sanctify his sheep is the word of God. Not experiences, not motivational talks, not smoke and mirrors, not great worship bands. It's the word of God that sanctifies the people of God to the glory of of God. Okay, so if it's to be the word of God, what does Jesus say that we should do with the word of God? Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, teaching them to obey all things that I have commanded you. Nowhere are we commanded to teach dreams, visions, or extra biblical activity. In fact, we are forbidden to do those things in Colossians 2, 18 through 19. Also, nowhere are we told to preach heavily about improving the quality nor comfort of this life. But this message fills churches. It fills bank accounts. It brings fame to men. This is a very familiar passage. Consider 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Who is the they? It's the people. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Paul is writing to Timothy, warning him, preparing him. There's going to be a day like today when men will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. They will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Look at that passage. Paul is warning Timothy of the wickedness of the people. Mark Ashton wrote a chapter in Don Carson's book called Worship by the Book. And in that chapter, he comments that preaching is a two-way process and that to some extent, congregations get the preachers that they deserve. Remember, godless preachers and godless preaching is upheld by godless congregations, congregations who do not value truth, who do not apply biblical principles to preaching, who do not hold everything they hear up in light of scripture to prove that which is good, pure, true, and beautiful. They enable false preaching because they themselves have heaped up these kinds of teachers. They prop them up. So it's not just as simple as slamming all of the false teachers and all the false preachers that we have in the world today. Some measure of blame is to be placed on the congregations in these places as well. They funnel their resources in. They plod, they laud, they keep showing up. They keep filling pews. They keep filling theaters. They keep filling stadiums. And this is exactly what the verse is saying in 2 Timothy 4. They will not endure sound doctrine. They don't want to hear what the Bible says, but according to their own desires, they know what they want to hear. They have itching ears. They heap up for themselves these kinds of false teachers. 
So now let's go to the true. Revelation 3.14 calls Jesus the faithful and the true witness. Now, this is a picture that should stand in stark opposition to what we've just been reading in Jeremiah 23 and in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. Jesus is the faithful and the true witness. This is an example for all ministers of the gospel. In a time when so many are unfaithful and false, so many are unfaithful and false. Here we have Jesus in Revelation 3.14 standing faithful and true, unfaithful and false, faithful and true. And how is he faithful and true? Because he stays true to the word of God of God. We are commanded to preach the word and to attend sound doctrine. We are commanded to be faithful and true witnesses. Listen to Paul writing to Timothy, 2 Timothy 4 verse 2, preach the word. Be ready to do it in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Convince using what? Convince using the word. Rebuke using what? Rebuke using the word. Exhort using what? Exhort using the word by preaching and teaching the word patiently, trusting John 17, 17, that God through his word is sanctifying his people. Titus 2 verse 1, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. These are commands, friends. Speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. To do that, we must distinguish a difference between preaching from the Bible and preaching the Bible. There's a difference between preaching from the Bible and preaching the Bible. Anyone can preach from the Bible. It's called eisegesis. It's when you Put your own ideas into a text. You lift a text off the page, take the text out of its proper grammatical contextual context, and then you use that verse to import your own ideas and communicate them through the Bible verse. Anyone can do that. That is not preaching sound doctrine. However, the opposite side of that coin, we have a word which is exegesis in opposition to eisegesis exegesis ex meaning out of so when we're exegeting text we're we're staying in the text and pulling out the meaning that the text gives us and presenting that truth to the people that is the difference between preaching from the bible and preaching the bible preaching the messages found in the bible not taking verses out of the bible and preaching our own messages there is a world of difference between the two One is faithful to God. One is deceitful in the heart. As being called to be faithful and true witnesses, we have Jesus as our example. Jesus was a preacher of the word. The Beatitudes in Matthew 5 draw on literary forms that we find in the Psalms. Jesus quoted from 24 different Old Testament books. And that's just in what we have him recorded as saying. In Jesus' temptation in the wilderness in Matthew 4 and Luke 4, he quotes Deuteronomy three times in that episode alone. Twice from chapter 6, once from Deuteronomy chapter 8. When Jesus wanted to speak about himself, as is the case in Luke 4, when he stood in the synagogue, he didn't give a homily and a poem and an illustration about himself. He simply got up in the synagogue and read from Isaiah 61. The apostles also preached the word of God and they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs. Mark 16, 20 says they went out and preached everywhere and the Lord confirmed the word. They preached the word. Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many also. Acts 15, 35. Friends, they were imitating their Lord. Jesus preached the word. The early apostles preached the word. The early church preached the word. This cannot be disputed. Faithful and true witnesses to Jesus Christ will preach the word. 2 Timothy 3.15 says, And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. Why is it so important? Why are you pressing the point that it must be the text? It must be the Bible. It must be the holy scriptures. Why are you pressing that point? Because only the holy scriptures, only the word of God, only the Bible is able to make you wise for salvation. Someone who gets up and preaches a dream cannot save 
That message cannot save. Someone who gets up and preaches prophetic experience, that message does not save, for it is only the Holy Scriptures that are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ. A motivational talk might be motivational, but it will save no one. That is why we must preach the text. It is only through the Holy Scriptures that God promises to give faith. Martin Luther famously commented, let the man who would hear God speak, read Holy Scripture. Let the man who would hear God speak, read Holy Scripture. His voice is all around you. You need do nothing but open the book and begin to read. And you will hear the very word of God being spoken to you. In this life, to abandon the Bible is to abandon God himself in wholesale fashion. I want to leave you with a verse from Jeremiah 23, the chapter that we were looking at at the beginning of this episode, verse 4, with a promise. Listen to God. I know it looks bleak. I know that it's difficult to discern good teaching in the times that we live in. But listen to Jeremiah 23, verse 4, God speaking. And I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we need you. This is a very serious thing. and It's a very serious time. And many, Lord are being led astray, drinking from cisterns that can hold no water. I pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord, that you would increase our discernment by giving us grace to open up your word. Help us to love your truth. Help us to resist the temptation to go other places to be fed. Pray for all pastors, ministers, preachers of the word, teachers of the word, listening to this podcast. I pray, Lord, you would hold before their eyes the image of Jesus, Revelation 314, the faithful and true witness who spoke the word of God faithfully. Pray they would think about that when they're preparing their Sunday school lessons, when they're preparing their Bible studies, when they're preparing their Sunday messages, Lord. I pray that they would see you in that way. I want to be a faithful and true witness. I want to preach the word just like my Lord did. And finally, Lord, I ask you to set up, just like you promised in Jeremiah 23, 4, that you would set up shepherds over your people who will faithfully feed them. I ask for that, Lord. Help us to be good stewards of your word. We love you, and we're so thankful for all you've done and all you're doing. For thine is the kingdom, for thine is the power, and thine is the glory forever. Amen. podcast. It is my sincerest hope that what you heard today was life-giving and encouraged you to love and serve Jesus more faithfully. Be sure to subscribe to receive new episodes delivered to your device. If you are being blessed by these podcasts, we'd love for you to share them with your friends on social media and help us spread the word. We also want to invite you to visit our blog at thetroughblog.com where you will find resources including a clear gospel presentation, topical articles, and much more. Thanks again for listening. We hope you join us again here on the Trough Podcast. God bless.